that's Eric, there you go. So um, maybe 10 years ago, I was sitting in my garden in London and I, somebody had given me a book about this woman here. <clears throat> she was born Diane Perry in uh, the east end of London in Bethnal Green. And she was relatively uneducated. Her father was actually a fishmonger. And at the age of 18, she got a job in a library and she found a book on Buddhism. So she went home and she said to her mom, ha, huh, I'm a Buddhist. And her mom said, that's very nice, dear. Finish the book and tell me all about it. So she finished the book and she said, yeah, I'm a Buddhist. I belong to the Kagyu lineage and I have to go to India to meet my teacher. So at the age of 18, this young woman got on a boat on her own and went to India. And her teacher was indeed waiting for her. The book is called A Cave in the Snow. It's a remarkable book. And the eighth Camtral Rinpoche was waiting for her. And she went on to become only the second Western woman to be ordained a Buddhist nun. So she was ordained in, in 1964. And after studying for some time with the Camtral Rinpoche, he said, okay, now it's time for you to spend some time alone. So she traveled 15,000 feet up into the Himalayas and found a cave in the snow and lived there in complete hermitage for 12 years. Now I've been in the cave and the cave is no bigger than maybe half of this part of the, the stage. Uh, her teacher, the Kamtra Rinpoche, insisted on two things. First, that they build a fourth wall and that the door would open in the way and she didn't understand until the first winter why that would be important because she had to dig herself out, you know, every winter several, several times. He also insisted that they made a, a chimney so that she would have heat. Uh, she didn't lie down for 12, there was, no, there was no bed in the cave. And she had a three foot square meditation box that occasionally she would curl up in, but most of the time she slept sitting up. She meditated for 12 hours a day. Now, do any of you here meditate? Five minutes is hard. 12 hours a day is brutal, absolutely brutal. Now, I, when I read this book 10 years ago, I decided I wanted to go and meet this woman. It doesn't happen every time I read a book. It's not like, oh, I have to go and meet this bird. But I decided I had to go and meet her. So I went and I found her. And she runs a nunnery for young Tibetan nuns in Dharamsala. And uh, so I've spent the last 10 years getting to know her. And this time, two years ago, we made a pilgrimage back to the cave. She actually left the cave 20 years ago. She's now 67. And this is she and I when we reached the cave after climbing the 15,000 feet that it took. Did I mention she's 67? After climbing the, the 15,000 feet, it took us to get there. Now, in all my time studying with, understanding, uh, being with this woman, including the month uh, that we spent getting up to the cave. If you ask me to define her in one line, I can do it. And I can tell you that the whole essence of this woman's being is about one thing. If a thing is worth doing, it's worth doing properly. Now, when you walk around this nunnery, for example, you go into the library she's created for these young women, and the bookshelves are just exquisite. You know, they've been created by these local artisans and the craftsmanship is, is absolutely incredible. So it doesn't matter whether she's designing a nunnery, and by this, this, this one looks like it was designed by Zaha Hadid. It doesn't matter whether she's creating a building or having a bookshelf built or learning how to meditate. If a thing is worth doing, it's worth doing properly. Now here's the deal. That's not me. I mean, I consider myself kind of a perfectionist, but that's not my thing. This is one of the most extraordinary people I've ever met. There's nobody like her. But the same thing applies to you. When you look at people that are remarkable in what